Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Video Mojo. I am delighted to welcome Judy Russell from across the pond, coming to us from Cork, Ireland. How are you, Judy? Great, thank you. How are you, John? Wonderful to have you here. And you are very much in the spirit of Video Mojo. We're going to help share a lot about how to make doing video easier or at least streamline your process, both mobile video and other kinds of video production, and also talk about Judy's creativity. She's been doing some really interesting things with AI and also just with multiple characters that she manages to play by herself. So thank you for being an inspiration, Judy. And as we said before we started recording, it's almost Almost like we know each other because we've interacted on social media and that's kind of been the environment. It's weird how you like have a, a close bunch of friends on kind of different platforms like you know John's my LinkedIn friend then I've got like other people I've never met before on Instagram that like you know are part of my circle and stuff like that it's it's amazing and strange and brilliant all at the same time. I thought I would start out talking about fears and you can pick but I feel like there's a parallel resistance that I see in the market marketplace. You know, you're a video coach and trainer. You've trained, coached both live and online. And, you know, one of the things that I know we both have dealt with is the fear of being on camera and showing your face. I also see a lot of resistance to AI. And I think that we both are kind of at least playing creatively. We'll talk more about that. And then the third one is TikTok. You know, I, I do think you're on TikTok and actively there. So are, do all those things go together or do you see them really separately? Oh God, I see them, I suppose, really separately. Like, you know, TikTok for me is kind of secondary to Instagram. I'm making the videos for Instagram essentially because people I know kind of that potentially could do I could do business with one day or on Instagram. So then I just end up cross posting to TikTok and YouTube shorts. So it's just more of a process. When TikTok first came out, I used to spend way more time on there because the algorithm got my interest so much quicker. Instagram has taken a while for its algorithm to kind of understand me. But now I feel like, I feel like they're different places. Like they're, they're shops on the same high street but they contain different items. Like TikTok is more grunge. Instagram is kind of more like going out style or something like that. I, I don't know how best to describe it, but like I want to go into both and I want to I check out what's on both. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting because I have a different experience of TikTok and I, we don't need to go far, too far down that rabbit hole, but we all develop our own TikTok based on yeah. who we follow and what we like. And I really have fun there. We're gonna be talking more about that and have talked more about it in the past. So what about the AI fear and resistance? You dove in and we're gonna talk a little bit more about your, you say Celtic goddess, right? That you created an AI animation. Welcome beautiful souls to this sacred journey guided by the gentle touch of the Irish goddess, Bridget. It really has a whole guided meditation. It's like. Very creative. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's so funny, right? Because I was, I, I just had a, a quick keyhole surgery in hospital and I, it was kind of a two week recovery. So I was like lying at home in bed all the time. And I was like, I was like with the laptop on and I was like, like back in the day, I would have edited videos, but I, but AI had just come out. So I was like, okay, let's take a deep dive into AI. And it's one of the first times that I've been like as excited about new stuff since I learned Premiere Pro, the editing software that I used. So I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. But but now I had to also, I, now I know myself better because I'm 38 and um, I'm not in my 20s anymore. So I was like, don't go all AI, like try and balance it out with something else. So at the same time, I just kept getting books and different uh, kind of like hearing different stories about Goddess Bridget or Saint Bridget, an Irish kind of saint or goddess before um, Catholicism came into Ireland. So I was like, OK, I'm just going to try and like I love guided meditation, so I'm going to learn about St. Bridget, learn about AI, and try and merge the two in together into a guided meditation, all using AI. So the voice is a clone of my voice. The text was ChatGPT, pasted into the voice software, and um, then put to, then I created a image of this goddess Bridget using, I think it was Leonardo, and then I made her mouth move using Studio DID, and uploading the audio file so that it synced her mouth with the audio. And it goes on mm -hmm. for like 10 minutes. And I, I was just like, oh, I had to change the background as well. I did her all in a green screen, then finally brought her into Premiere Pro, kind of got all of the images for the background from AI as well. And mm. uh, I think it was like, yeah, I just, I couldn't believe that like there was nothing that I robbed from someone else 
or like had to spend hours and hours creating myself. It was like, it's all just doing it for me, like with a few ideas and prompts. Well, I think that you also, there's two big things that I think are important takeaway, takeaways that I would underscore. One is that you made it, you're making a decision in your life not to go all in with AI. And I'm a little bit more in the all in with AI thing. And we'll talk more about that next week. I have a special guest coming up. But you also said that about Instagram as you, you know, I think that I've had made the mistake in the past and seen others of spreading themselves too thin, but you've also demonstrated a willingness to play and experiment. And I think that your abilities and history as a video producer brought a very human element, even though a lot of it was done for you that would have normally taken a lot longer to create, you know, it's not a mistake or an accident that you were able to do something really different than anything I've seen. Actually. And I did get like, you know, an, a, a message from a guy being like, this is going to take away human creativity. Nothing. There's nothing original about this. I've seen all of this before and stuff like that. And like, I was a little bit disheartened for a second. And I was like, as you said at the start, there's a lot of fear at the moment. And I feel like that kind of attitude comes from fear and maybe it is rightful fear. Maybe, you know, I'm wrong and it's not going to lend to creators to be more creative. Maybe it's just going to de- or incapacitate us. I, I don't know where it's going to go, but like you can't just ignore this stuff. You either like if you can't beat them, join them and just try and understand and make it better. Because imagine if all the bad actors in the world were using AI and none of the creatives were using AI, then where are we going to be? So like, I, I don't see the issue with it at all at the moment. I can only see the positives right now. Yeah, well, that, the common saying in the AI community is that AI is not going to take your job but people using AI will. And so it's those of us that learn these skills that are really going to be able to leverage them and take advantage. You know, the concerns are legitimate, so I don't blame people for having the concern. And at the same time, like you said, the toothpaste is not going back in the tube. <laughs> it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. And it's fun. I mean, I, I imagine fun. that you really had a good time creating that guided meditation, yes? It's such a laugh. I loved it. And I saw on your page that you created a talking avatar and he looked really cool. I loved that. Yeah, thank you. It, I mean, that's a new production style and I guess gives us a segue into talking about Carol because, <laughs> and you know, let's talk about video production. We're both producers, directors of Video Mojo. You know, there is the kind of style that you did with Carol and again, we'll drop her in and, and show people segments of this these uh, season that you did, right? And yeah. But it's you in one character with a wig looking on one angle and another character being yourself having this conversation about client relations, I believe, was the theme. And I see a lot of that on TikTok, some very creative. I love Elle Cordova. I'll drop in a recommendation. She just has done some incredible writing and plays. She did one about the future of technology where she was like, you know, the um, printing press and then fire and then AI showing up to the party. And cool. another one where she was typefaces. Anyway, that that's a production style where you talk to yourself. And yeah. then the production style that I've seen recently with AI that that avatar you're talking about, I call him AI Arnie, my new intern, uh, <laughs> is having a similar dialogue where you're the only speaker, you're the only writer, let's say, because with Arnie, I'm using one of the AI voices, so he has his own voice. But rather than just doing a video that's standalone talking head, we have other voices. Um, I've started playing in a community called the AI Surfer. And um, this guy has done that kind of production uh, where he's developed, he's got uh, GPT Genie having wisdom and Buzz, who actually is kind of like, I want to call her a hippie chick. I don't know what the right thing, you know, she's a young woman with punky hair and she's like totally cool and talks all the like millennial slang. <laughs> But anyway, no. the point is that the videos get more interesting when we bring in these other characters. Totally, totally. And you know, I just like, I think it was the start of January. I was um, like, someone was saying, make a hundred videos to try and grow your Instagram. Just make a video a day for a hundred days. And I was like, I just don't want to do that. Like, I just don't want to make a video every day in the same format with a video tip kind of thing, you know? And I was just like, I, and not that I don't think it works. I think it a hundred percent works to grow your channel. 
but I was just like I'd rather just like make something like because I had a week free as well it was early January so I was like I want to just create something within this week and not have to worry about it the next week and the first place I started was with ChatGPT I was like okay so I had I got I used to work I used to edit a hidden TV a hidden camera TV show years ago and uh, my friend who was the producer of the show she was like do you want all of the props from the fear the camera show and I was like I'd love them so she I literally have a full size leprechaun costume over here four wigs <laughs> like so I had all of this stuff and I was like what am I going to do with it so that mixed with a wig mixed with a week off mixed with chat GPT and you know I'm always doing other voices as well when I'm with my friends like I do have like an American kind of um Carol side to me I have like a tech bro side to me you know and, and I was like oh, this is actually fun and it was really fun now filming it all myself like obviously writing the scripts was okay I'd do that in the morning then in the afternoon then I'd put on Carol's wig and pick a location and film myself and what I decided this time John which was really interesting is to not use mics I was like, if I start bringing in microphones, this is going to drive me mad. I'm on my own, like, I can't do everything. So I was like, I'm just going to try the first one with onboard mics on the phones and run them through Adobe Podcast Enhance at the end and see how it sounds. And all of them are AI audio improved rather than That's an a, actual that, mic. That so. tool is phenomenal. I think we should, for people that may not know about it, you can run virtually any audio through this free Adobe tool. You do have to have a little bit of savvy to break out the audio, right? Because if you're yeah. doing video, you're pulling the audio track and putting it back in. So that's the one little kind of caveat from video production. But it's a miracle. It's like, it it's, it's like miracle. another AI miracle, which pr I promise you people, there are many more AI <laughs> miracles coming. But it's remarkable, right? It's just like, so you could, so you just let the audio be crappy off mic, just the camera mic using your then, phone. Because I was thinking as well, like I can do ADR, which is audio dialogue replacement, which I think a lot of people don't realize. A lot of movies and TV shows, the actors mm -hmm. aren't actually speaking live during their take. They have to come back into a booth, watch themselves talking and mimic what they've said into the mic so that the audio is really good. Like say they've got like, you know, a really busy scene with cars in the background and stuff. They'll want the cleanest audio take. So it's a lot of act actor time goes into it. So I was like, oh, sure, I could just do that if all else fails. And that will actually be less time consuming than worrying about the mics and you know I don't mind seeing mics like I'd use a lapel say if I was just doing a training video or something like that but in this fake acting scene you can't show a mic like so I was like I'm gonna have to hide the mic the mic, the mic is gonna be bashing off my clothes that's gonna wreck my head and I'll just be doing every take and oh it's just so I was like I could not believe it was all Adobe podcast enhanced and that was it. Like I'm, I'm pushing it now. Though every time I do like a, a take, and there's like, I don't know, a, a, a fireworks in the background, I'm like, ah, oh, it's grand. We'll fix it in Adobe Podcast and hands, but that's gonna get me in trouble. I'm, I'm being too confident about it. But in the end, it worked fine, right? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. And, and you shot them all with your phone? All with phone. Yeah, yeah. Cinematic mode as well. Um, I just wanted to get that nice blurry kind of background and, you know, a little bit of kind of color correction in um, in the edit and stuff like that. Like I did edit them in Premiere Pro. I, you know, like it, I, I, like I put in sound effects. Like people don't realize the importance of sound effects on videos. Like if, if like, I don't know, a door closes, you really want to hear the door close. Otherwise, you feel really alienated from the scene. And... Uh, and even music and things like that, you know, all of that stuff, I suppose. You know, I, I forget that I have a lot of experience, John, and I'm sure you do too. Like you kind of just, everyone can make videos now. So you're like, what is my even skill? But then when I get into something like that, I'm like, oh yeah, that's where the experience comes in. It's like knowing all of these tiny little pieces that merge together to kind of make the finished part. Yeah, you're the human in the loop or we're the human in the loop when we do that. that I've learned that recently. It's an AI term, actually, technical term, human in the 
the loop, which is there is a human in the process that's monitoring and making a difference. You know, one of the things that I think that you teach, correct me if I'm wrong, is using mobile video, using your iPhone or, or, or smartphone camera. And you also do more studio production. I don't know, a lot, of, a lot of your clients, I believe, are corporate clients who you're training and coaching. How do you feel about mobile video, mobile cameras? I, you know, full disclosure, I am looking at my iPhone right now. I use an app called Camo. And in order to have my webcam on this iMac, it's a little bit older iMac, sucks. The video quality is horrible. But yeah. the camera in my iPhone is remarkable. So that gives me good quality. So I don't know, tell me where you're at about the mobile video revolution. Well, I like, so I started out with a Canon 550D and I loved that camera. That was my, my fail safe camera for many years. And then I got a TV show. So I bought a Canon C300, which was a very nice, like four grand camera at the time. The lenses were extra. It was, it was lovely. I could shoot in low light, but it ended up like having all of this gear all these mics, all these lights, all this stuff. I had a van and like, you know, by the time I'd get an interview shot set up, I'd be like actually dead from like the stress and the lifting and the stuff like that. So I'd say it was about seven years ago. Um, I was working on the a film. It was called The Young Offenders and it got um, to Netflix in Ireland and on cinema releases. I think they made a, a million in the box office. Like it was a total indie kind of, not indie film, but like low budget, no budget film that I worked on over a summer and had no expectations for other than it being a fun project. But I was the behind the scenes producer as the official title. There was only like eight of us on the crew, so I had lots of different roles, but I couldn't bring that little camera, that trusty camera with me because I had to carry other people's gear the most important gear into fields through West Cork like it was all mad so I had an iPhone 6 at the time and I started filming behind the scenes footage with my iPhone 6 thinking like I won't be able to use this it's not going to be good enough but then when I got back to the edit and I was comparing the footage from the Canon to the iPhone 6 I was like hold on a second I was like this is really good so I ended up selling all my gear all of my expensive gear after that and just going completely mobile and um, within a few weeks we had made like or within sorry a couple of years we'd made a pilot for a tv show for our national broadcaster um all on phones i think that was the iphone 8 at the time and uh, and then i just started to build out corporate content for workshops which you know the phone is one part of it that's the filming side but so much goes into planning that if your plan isn't good it doesn't matter what you shoot on it's not going to be good but if your plan is great you can get great quality out of a mobile phone with just a few tips. And then the now, editing I used to talk stopped. about, sorry to interrupt, but pre-production is like, it is so crucial. You know, totally. you're touching on some really important things that we have as video experience, pre-production, and then the importance of audio. Notice folks, we both have good mics in front of us. You know, it's like, and hopefully that sound, it drives me crazy on American television, on cable news, for example, these high paid analysts who are now on air from their homes, using basically the speaker off speakerphone off their laptop it's and it's mad. like you're on television people and and I think it's also respect for the audience so anyway it's, you were underscoring the importance of a plan which you know in the old days in video production in New York that was pre-production <laughs> yes, of course, of course. And I still call it pre-production, but I've kind of had to lose, drop the lingo a bit, you know, to kind of uh, go. But like even yesterday, I went and filmed a day of um, a half day of filming. But like, you know, everything had a script and a shot list, you know, like there's not like I won't actually film anything anymore because I learned this the hired way. I used to make a TV show, which was uh, half an hour a week all about stuff going on in my local area. So it would be news, sport, music and something else. So I'd show up to an event and I'd have no idea what was going on at the event. I'd try and find the organiser. I'd stick a microphone in the organiser's face and just figure out what was going on as we were going through. So I'd get home with about like, I don't know, a half an hour of content per segment that needed to be like five minutes long. So I'd just like be listening to, and I was just like, this is actually mind numbing. I can't do this anymore. So following that heartbreak, I was like, right, I'm just going to work with you and define exactly what you're going to say. I'm going to put a teleprompter up and I'm going to get you to read it. And I don't care if you don't think it's going to sound natural. I'm going to get you to say it like 15 times until it sounds natural. <laughs> and mm. I'm not going outside of that. Like I might be a bit too rigid. Now, say it's a, a story about something like personal, to someone. I won't do it then. But if it's an about us video for a company, I'm like, 
there's going to be no gold in something that you say off script. <laughs> like, get the get the script down. It has to be a minute long. So let's just like be really ruthless in the words that we're going to say <laughs> and use. And you mentioned that you use ChatGPT on the script for the guided meditation. Are you doing that when you do corporate videos and so forth as well? It, that's exactly what I do. So again, another lesson hard learned uh, was I used to go into companies back in the early days, now years ago when I first started making corporate corporate videos and I'd be nervous like right and I'd be like okay tell me about your business and I'd take about 10 pages of notes and then I'd be like okay I'll go away and write a script and uh, I'll come back to you and then for about 10 days I'd be like I'd, I'd almost be in the company's financial plans trying to figure out what they do like and I was like I need to stop doing this why am I writing scripts for companies when they have all the information downloaded in their heads already they need to be the ones writing the scripts. So what I do is I do everything I do, if, even if I'm making a video for someone, there is training involved in it because I want them to feel like they can write a script after I leave. So with this video, what I did was a workshop with the person and then he, I, I did that thing where he told me everything about the company. Then I put that into a draft script and shot list ran that through ChatGPT to make it a little bit better or worse and then sent it to him and was like, okay, now you have a week to send me back the better version. And, you know, like it was great because he was like, oh God, oh, I wouldn't say that now. Oh God, that sounds very braggy or that sounds very this or that. And I was like, great, now you know how to fix it. So just go ahead and fix it. Whereas if I gave him a blank page, he'd be like, what? What do I say? You know, so I love that about ChatGPT. Yeah, and I think that it's you're again underscoring the human and the the process. That I mean, I'm going to be doing a TikTok or short form video about this soon because like people don't know to just use it as a draft. As a writer, the first draft is always the hardest, and having any first draft and then being able to massage it and get other people involved is so empowering. It's yeah. my my word for AI is, is a creativity enhancer and yeah. learning those kinds of things, like you just said. Well, I I think this is great, Judy, and we're I think we need to do more you you are like i said an example of video mojo and i love that we can share kind of the professional video meets this new world of ai and mobile video the last question i want to talk to you is about you know which apps you're using because you've done tips online about CapCut in particular which is something mm -hmm. i'm curious about and i was it your post that i saw about CapCut now has image generation inside it yeah so, you know, you, you've you've made clear you use Premiere Pro when you are doing more sophisticated edits, yeah, but are you using exactly. CapCut on a lot of your Instagram reels? Oh, like I just like I want to use CapCut. Like I, I go to Premiere Pro like definitely now with, with like, you know, multi-camera footage. I'm not going to do that in CapCut. I've got, I've got two angles of a person. I need Premiere Pro for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But like I'm in Premiere Pro and I'm like, where are the sound effects? And I'm like, where are the cool transitions and stuff like that? But like CapCut is very for social media edits, but I can see it kind of this style becoming more of like Adobe is going to have to step up. Sorry, Adobe, your, your podcast enhancer, amazing audio, but like <laughs> your Premiere Pro is going to have to get with the vertical short video style as well. Like CapCut is, CapCut blows my mind. Like I'm like, how do they do this? And how do they give it to us for free? There's so much in there that you can do that like, that, you know, and it almost annoys me a bit because like there's, there's a button you can press in, for, in CapCut for things that used to take me weeks to try and do manually in Premiere Pro. And, and it's almost like, you know, people just think if you just remove a background now by just going background remover. Like if I was trying to remove a background without a green screen, I'd have to like keyframe every frame. And oh, just like, that's the PTSD now from all nighters editing, trying to get things right talking. But now everything has become so simple, which is great but also a little bit frustrating because I've had to come through the trenches. <laughs> it is amazing how that in particular. Are there other examples of things besides green screen that used to take you a long time that cap cuts I, I, like us honestly everything like those transitions that like you know like the the zoom in to from one image and then zoom out from another like if I was trying to create that manually, again, it would take ages. Now you can download transition packs for Premiere Pro that you can kind of bring into them and stuff like that. But like, and even text animation, I'm sorry, subtitles. 
I used to have to manually pause, play, write down what the person was saying, pause, play, and then put it into, <laughs> type it up into a Word document, copy paste every like five or six words into a new text layer of the edit. Now in CapCut, I play, I press auto transcript or auto subtitles, whatever it is, and within four and a half seconds, it adds subtitles that I can customise to the entire video. And I'm just like... Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> like, why did why did this not happen? Why why was I not born later? Maybe it's moving so fast. So, and are you using CapCut Desktop as well as mobile, or strictly desktop? No, both, both, depending on the project. But like, you know, that AI image generator, that's only available on the desktop at the moment. So, you know, if you're making a quick video and you're talking about air fryers, you can just image generate air fryers within CapCut. So without leaving the app, you can drop an image of an air fryer over what you're saying. And that is such a convenience and a time saver to not be like out of CapCut into stock footage, searching stock footage like, it, but it's a style thing. I don't think it will suit everyone, but I'd almost be trying to lean into creating videos with that kind of style to make life a million times easier for yourself. Yeah, and that, the and the videos, th these are still images or they're moving images? Still, of the, still. Of the air fryers. Yeah, they're, they're still. But then, you know, like what I do with an air fryer is like, say it's a lovely air fryer on a kitchen counter, then I'd add some motion to the air fryer where the shot just zooms in a bit so it's not just completely static. And, and then right. it can kind of look like a video zoom as opposed to image. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm uh, another app that I I don't know have, if you've looked at Ideogram, but it's amazing. It's Ideogram.ai is actually kicking Dolly's butt for sure. No, it's way. so easy to use, and yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna do a whole video how to on that, but that's another tip, folks. If you haven't tried CapCut, try CapCut, particularly on the desktop. Yeah, to see the image generation. But it came up yesterday. Somebody said, "What are you using for stock footage these days, or stock images?" And, and I said, I'm generating them myself, an ideogram. Not only is it easier and you get more exactly what you're looking for, but it's more fun. Like you said, yeah. stock footage research and, or stock image research and looking to trying to get the right thing can be laborious and boring. 100%. And also, like, you know, Pexels was kind of the stock image site that I used to recommend to people. And it's great because like, it's a creative common site. So people upload their images, and they're happy for you to use them and you use them. But someone was saying that, like, uh, what's happening at the moment is that people are actually uploading other people's images, copyright images, um, and not telling you like they're pretending that they're their own. And then you end up using this image, but then you get in trouble because the actual mm. photographer or videographer did didn't actually give you permission. So that scared me. I was like, oh, I don't want to do that at all. So that's another great reason to, you know, generate your own images with AI. Wow, you flipped the script. I mean, <laughs> and, and similarly, I, I've used a lot of unsplash images, which they also give you the rights to do. And I think maybe they're a little more rigorous about making sure that it's the, the right source. But everybody's always talking about, oh, AI is referencing these other arts and these other images. Mm -hmm this massive database that is incomprehensibly big. And, you know, you just said, oh, no, it's the thing that we used to do for stock footage of these commons images are actually more likely to have a rights violation than the AI. So yeah. thank you for that. I had not heard that issue. Well, hopefully, like AI might flip the script on us now and be like, hold on a second, we own all of the images and you owe us five for each for using them. I don't think that's going to happen, but yeah, I don't know I, what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, we know, nobody knows what's going to happen exactly, yeah. but it, it just is so, when I think about, you know, people, I, I have writers who like push back on me when I posted something to Facebook and they're using my work as part of their database. I mean, they're using like trillions of documents and then aggregating them down into the ability to predict what it is that you want. Yeah. It's like, you know, not any different to me, at least my this is my personal opinion of anybody who's writing has been influenced of you read a novel that you like the writing style or whatever it was, we're all influenced by other things. And the AI in the same way is influenced by everything. <laughs> Absolutely. And like there's a book, I'm sure you've probably heard of it or read it, maybe it's called Steal Like an Artist. Have you come across that? Austin it's Cleon, such a good yeah. book. 
Yeah, yeah. and like well, it, it, and that's exactly three of what them. it says. There's, so I I have been teaching this thing called the Creativity Sandbox, which I have not announced publicly. So those of you that are still watching and listening, you're on the inside. It's becoming the Video Mojo Exploratorium is going to be the new offer. But basically, encouraging people's expression. That's my. I'll, I'll go off a little bit on my thing. You know, it's like expression breeds connection. And so I really want to inspire people to express their creativity, which is very much what Austin Kleon is all about. Steal like an artist, show your work, which is a lot to me, like show your face on video and keep mm -hmm. going. I think those are the three little books that he's done. Now, he's a great guy and I recommend following him on social media as well and, and subscribing to his free newsletter. He does once a week. He gives you 10 things that he's uh, like checking out. Could be movies, could be music, True. could be anything. He's also into owls. I love owls. Anyway. <laughs> well, okay. You know way more about him than I do. And I, I, I shouldn't have named drop him, but I'm so glad that you do. I'm, I'm like super interested yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, it's a point. It's, it's kind of like it makes sense, though, because we're talking about video mojo. We're talking about creativity. And yeah, Judy, keep going. So let's talk about your coordinates. Where would do you want people? I know it's, correct me if I'm wrong, thevidacademy.com. Perfect. Uh, and that, I can't tell you how many people down are like Vida Academy. And I'm like, no, like Vid, Video, Vid Academy. I, I thought it made perfect sense, but it's actually not the most easy to kind of read name in the world. But it's working. It's working for me. Good. And and you use that same as your uh, label on Instagram and TikTok yeah. and other places. And you have yeah, a YouTube channel hands. as well, all under yeah. the Vid Academy. Yeah. So exactly. good. Check her out. She's definitely doing some wonderful creative work. And again, thanks for being my online friend. And thanks for coming to Video Mojo. Thanks, John. Great to meet you. And and come back to, for more Video Mojo. I, I wanted to underscore that at Combridge's C-O-M, not the other com, combridges.com slash blog is where I aggregate the episodes of Video Mojo, so you can go there, combridges.com slash blog, or of course my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you again, Judy. It's a joy to meet you. More soon.